if you love the idea of living in a tiny house, but are a little bit concerned that you won't be able to make the space work, then this next tour is for you, because we're about to visit one of the most spacious and well-designed tiny houses that we've seen so far. Hey Rebecca, it's great to see you. Hi Bryce, thanks for coming. It is my pleasure to be here. And what a beautiful tiny house you've got here. Thank you. So first of all, can you talk to me about what it was that inspired you to build a tiny home? Yeah, I can. It was a series of unfortunate events that led me to be a uh, single 40 with a small child and homeless. So I ended up landing on my sister's doorstep. She lives here and she's got all this land. And the rental market was awful. So we thought about building tiny. Amazing. Yeah. And I know what you mean, especially over the last few years, the rental market in New Zealand just went absolutely crazy. It was just so hard to find homes. And what an incredible situation you've got yourself into with this tiny house now. I know, I feel almost lucky in a way. I was very unlucky at one point. Our landlords came back from overseas in the midst of the COVID-19 lockdowns and we had to get out of our rental home and I couldn't find anywhere to live. But in the end, it's led me uh, to this. And now I feel very happy that I never have to beg a landlord to <laughs> take me on or keep me on. So yeah, I've got my own home and I'm really blessed. Being able to design my own space was really something special for me. And to that end, you did all the design work in the tiny house yourself, didn't you? Yes, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun, took a lot of hours, but yeah, designed every little millimetre. And the result is just incredible. What size is the tiny house? The footprint is a three meter by 10.6. Great, so it's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, which yeah. is necessary because you live here with your son. I do, yeah, my little four year old boy and he takes up quite a bit of space for, for a tiny person. They do, yes. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to compromise on the space. I wanted this to be my home for a long time. Yeah. I'm used to living in small apartments, but it's better because you don't get all this when you're living in a city apartment. You certainly don't. The views from here are just incredible. Can you tell me about the parking space you've got here? I got really lucky with a sister who has this expansive amount of land. She lives right next door to me, which is also a massive bonus. Um, I love her to death. And she's got five beautiful kids. And the smallest one, she just adores my son. So they spend a lot of time together and she comes over and babysits sometimes and I get to go out and do some exercise. <laughs> perfect. It is perfect, yeah. I'm really happy. Well, it sounds like it's a great situation that's working well for everyone. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really good. I'll run their kids around and they help me out with Hugo a lot of the time as well. So, yeah. And could you talk to me about the design of the tiny house? Yeah, I can. It looks like a tiny house, doesn't it? They all kind of look the same. And that's because of the constraints that you're working with and, you know, they have to be a certain width. So I haven't sort of tried to do anything special about that. I've just worked within the constraints I had. And yeah, the color choice went for black because I knew that I wanted the white joinery and anything other than black just looked a little bit insipid. So I just went for the real contrast and have black and white. Yeah, yeah nice choice. Very yeah. classic and it looks great. Yeah, so I'm not trying to be anything that it's not. It's, it's just a funny looking object at the top of a hill. And then this deck that you've got here is quite special as well, isn't it? Because this is actually a system that you've designed. Yeah, it is actually. It's called the Ready Deck system and I designed it while I was getting my house built. I was working with the builder and just talking about what I do. I was at the time working on a wall system and wanted to translate that into decks. He gave me the motivation to actually turn it into a product for tiny homes and, and that's what I've done. Yeah. Fantastic. So this is the original prototype. I'm just living on the prototype now, but pretty exciting venture for us. Absolutely. So it's sort of like a modular deck system that's designed to be used with tiny homes so it can easily up and move with the house. Yeah, that's right. It's freestanding, so you can put it anywhere. What a cool idea. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to see what you've done on the inside of this home. Can we take a look? Yeah, of course. Come in. Thank you very much. Wow, this is absolutely spectacular. I can see that you have had an incredible amount of fun designing this place. Definitely have really like light open spaces. So having the double height space in a big part of this home was really important to me. 
Yeah. I would easily say that this is one of the most spacious feeling tiny homes that I've ever stepped into. Yeah, thank you. I spent a lot of time drawing this up in CAD and rendering the spaces and really understanding what it's going to feel like. So yeah, I kind of knew it before it was built. I knew how it was going to feel and it, it felt right. Yeah. As you say, you've got the double height in this part of the home, but you've also got all of these windows that extend right up to the ceiling. And where there aren't windows, you've got the mirrors, which is such a nice touch. Yeah, making the most of the light was really important to me. So I love mirrors, not because I love myself. I just love what they do to a space. And the styling in this home is so beautiful as well. You've got these big flowing curtains and all of the white and the touches of gold and pink. It's just such a lovely space to walk into. Thank you. Spaces have always have had a real effect on me. Like they can make me feel desperate and sad or they can make me feel uplifted and really happy and joyful. So I wanted this place to make me feel like that. You know, I was, I was low in my life and I needed a place that was going to make me feel better. And you really have absolutely nailed that in this home. It's just such a comforting space to walk into, isn't it? Especially with all the plants and the lovely colours. It's a very soft home that just makes you feel wonderful and relaxed when you walk into it. That's exactly what I needed it to do for yeah. me. So yeah, I'm very happy. And I'm, I look forward to coming home whenever I'm out and yeah. And this lounge is an especially welcoming space. That sofa just looks ridiculously comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. It is a giant sofa. It's very comfortable and my son and I spend a lot of time there. It was important for me to have the lounge dedicated to just relaxing really. And yeah, the sofa, it's, it's been through some things. That's why I've got it covered with rugs and what. <laughs> What not? There's many a stain under that blanket, but I do love my sofa. And it's really nice the way that you've carpeted the lounge as well, because it adds this zone of separation from the kitchen, and it just goes an extra step towards making that space feel very cozy and soft. Yeah, having carpet in the lounge was a no-brainer for me. I wanted the delineation between the kitchen space and the lounge, so yeah, that's a good way to do it. And the design of your kitchen is exceptionally clever. The use of these mirrors and the way that you've got the narrow bench top there and the mirror makes it look like it's extended and matches the depth of both of the other bench tops. I have never seen that done before, but it just works so incredibly well. Thank you. Yeah, it's a bit of a Rebecca original. Um, it was important to me to have bench space on all three sides of the kitchen. Having this at 600 mils, um, which is standard bench, would have just been too much in the space. So I brought it back down. To 300 and had these cupboards high enough that I could stand there comfortably and use that space. So yeah, it works really well. It certainly does. This looks like an incredibly functional design. You've got all the necessary appliances, good size fridge and cooker, and I especially like the way that you've got the return here with the seating as well. Yeah, thanks. I needed to have somewhere for my boy and I to sit. So <laughs> that was important. And also, if you notice here, the cupboard kind of turns in. It's angled there. Yeah, yeah. it's angled in so that I can get that sort of overhang there so you can sit comfortably here and also make the most of the storage under here. And ultimately this just looks like such a nice place to cook. Yeah, I'm not much of a cook but um, it does everything I need it to do. I'm really happy with it. And it's really nice the way that you've extended so much storage into the higher reaches of the kitchen too. Yeah, those cupboards are really high but you can reach them going up the stairs on the way up so that was a good kind of use of space hack I guess. They're really deep cupboards as well so you can fit actually quite a lot in them. Great, very yeah. nicely done. And you've obviously got a lot of storage here as well. Like I don't see any of your appliances or anything out on the bench top. Yeah, I really wanted to keep a clean space. Yeah. So yeah, I've sort of got storage behind here that hides all my appliances. And on this side, I've got a full height cupboard. I lived for so long in places where there was nowhere to put my vacuum cleaner or my mop. And so I've designed a special place for that. Very clever. Yeah, thanks. And then you've got this nice hallway which leads to the stairs, the bathroom and your son's room as well. Yeah, very important to have a hallway. It sure is. <laughs> well, can we check out the bathroom first? Yes, please. I love my bathroom. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> Come through. Hey, wow, this is beautifully done. The color scheme in here is just gorgeous. You've got these lovely stone tiles, the concrete look in the shower, and then these pink walls. It just works together so well. Yeah, thank you. I had it in my head that I wanted a pink bathroom. I don't know why, just a bit curly. And found these beautiful tiles, and then, yeah, and a pink to match, and also, you know, pink basin to go, to go with. And just, yeah, made a beautiful, calming, 
Space to bathe in and poo. <laughs> to bathe in and poo. Nice to do both of those things in peace. Yeah. And it is a flushing toilet that you've got here as well. It is, yes. We are connected to a septic tank here. So, you know, I wanted my small child to learn how to pee like a man. So, yeah, went with the with the old standard toilet. Good call. Mm. Certainly more comfortable for men to not have to sit down with a urine separator. There's no question about that. <laughs> yes, I'll <heard. laughs> Absolutely. And the way that you've done the shower is incredibly interesting, tucking it under the walkway like that. Certainly does rule out the option of having a tall partner in the future though. <laughs> Well, that's true. I, I designed men out of my space. It is designed for me. And <laughs> I, I expect that Hugo will grow tall one yeah. day and also not fit in my shower. But I'm sort of of the thinking that should a man want to come into my life, he can bring his own tiny home. And uh, when Hugo gets tall enough to not fit my shower, maybe he'll be old enough to have his own little pod outside. So I've thought about it all. That's great. What a great plan too. Yeah. I like that idea. So men applications require your own tiny house. <laughs> yeah. And next door we've got Hugo's room. Can we check that out? Yes, of course. Come on. Okay. Oh, this is so cool. I was an astronomy nut when I was a kid. I would have absolutely loved this room. <laughs> yeah, Hugo loves the moon and the stars. Moon was like one of his first words and we always look at it and marvel at it. So uh, yeah, I may have overdone the moons in this room. but No, nope, um... <laughs> no way. I love it. This is great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. It makes the space feel so cozy and interesting as well. And I could just imagine lying in that bed and looking up at the wonderful picture wall you've created. They're all glow in the dark. So when you turn the lights off, it's like this kind of 3D sky effect. It's really cool. Amazing. Did you paint this yourself? I did, yeah. Well done. Yes. I really like that. Yes. And everything that a young child needs. He's got plenty of storage for all of his toys and enough space where he can play and then a comfortable bed. Yeah, it's a great size. Never have any trouble. He plays on the floor all the time. Uh, runs up and down the hallway with his cars. Yeah, it's a good functioning little space for a little man. It certainly is. Mm. I'm quite jealous even now, to be honest. <laughs> this uh, panel slides across at night. So when Hugo needs to go to sleep and the sun's still out, I can pull that panel across and it blocks off all the light. And it's just a little bit different to a curtain. <laughs> yeah, way cooler than a curtain. I love that. Yeah, there's an image on the back side of it as well. So... If you're outside the house, you can see another moon. What a great idea. That is so much more interesting than just a curtain. And then your room is upstairs. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, my office as well. Oh, cool. I can see you've built a lot of storage into these stairs as well. Yeah, the stairs are working really hard. I've got drawers on the first four risers and then uh, the higher space up here, there's actually a secret door on the outside of the house that opens up to hold all my outdoor gear like lawnmower and line trimmer and just tools and things um, that I don't want inside. So yeah, very hard working staircase. It sure is. Yeah. Great job with that. And the walkway, really, really well done. I mean, I'm 6'4 and even I can stand up here. Yeah, it was really important to me to not feel like I had to crouch. So yeah, that's why I created the bulkheads downstairs and lowered the shower downstairs so I could get this head height up here. Very good job with that. And again, the way that you've used this huge mirror here just completely adds to the sense of spaciousness up here. It's actually acrylic. It's three millimeter acrylic, so you do get a little bit of wobble in the mirror. I was disappointed at first, but it's actually, um, I kind of think of it as a parallel watery world. And it does do wonderful things with the light, like yeah. it reflects the light and just makes beautiful reflections everywhere. So yeah, it actually worked out quite well. I really like this as a feature. And the office, what a cool setup this is. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a bit of a workaholic. I spend most of my time at my desk if I'm not with my son. So it was important that it was a beautiful space to be in. I didn't want it to be tucked away somewhere. So yeah, really happy with it overlooking the lounge. And if he goes downstairs in the lounge, I can see him from my office and also get to look out at the view. Yeah, it's just a bit distracting having my bed right there Right. <laughs> sometimes, but no, I love it. The call of coziness when you're trying to work. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Especially when there's sun puddles on it. I'm just like, mm. Makes procrastination just a little bit too easy. Yeah. But ultimately, this just looks like such a functional space to work from. You've even got enough space to have the dual monitors and everything. Very important for design work. 
what a cool setup this is. Yeah, it's everything I need. And I've created this little storage space by putting a, a hole in this wall um, and creating space under the joinery in the bedroom. So I've got enough room to store all the little office bits and electrical things that need to go in boxes. Nicely done. <laughs> and then your bedroom. This looks like such a cozy space. Oh, it really is. I love my room. And again, here in the bedroom, you have used the space incredibly three-dimensionally. Yeah, yeah, that's how I design in three dimension and imagining myself in the space. It's all about the bed, really, isn't it? Of course. And storage, as a, you know, afterthought. But <laughs> well, it looks like you have got a lot of storage in here, so it hasn't entirely been an afterthought. Well, that's true. It wasn't an afterthought. It was very thought out. <laughs> I've only just got the storage unit in. I've got drawers all along under the bed. Uh, there's some units at the base there, and then I can fit a set of drawers up here. Great. And it's really nice the way that you've got the bed tucked into the corner there and the panoramic windows surrounding it. I love being on my bed. I love it in the day when there's sun puddles on it and I love it at night when I can look out at the stars. So yeah, it's a, it's a great spot in the house. Yeah, hmm. very nice. And so how long have you been living in the home now? I moved in February. It was the weekend of the, uh, the big storm, Gabriel. Oh, right. Yeah, so we got we got the house in like moments before yeah, the cyclone hit. And it what was, a welcome. It was a very nail-biting night. I didn't think I'd wake up to my tiny home, but it was still standing. So. Scary. Yeah, yeah, trial by fire. Yeah, yeah, but it stood up to the test, which is great. <laughs> it did. I'm not afraid of wind anymore. <laughs> yeah. And now that you're living in the home, now how's tiny house life working out for you? I love it. I can't imagine not living in this home. And that's one of the very special things about it, that I'll be able to pick it up and take it with me when, when it's time to move on. So, yeah. And now you have that housing security that you didn't before. Yeah, that's a biggie for me. I feel so much more secure. Even though I don't own land, I have a home. Being a designer and getting to design my own space is a dream being my own client and knowing exactly what I own and where I'm going to put it and making a space for everything was just really, it's really cool. And now I live in a space where I don't have all those little annoying things that you do in a rental. Custom designed. It's awesome. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this home? So the contract price was $190 and then I threw in some variations that probably amounted to about 10k, you know, up speaking the bathroom and the kitchen. And then, yeah, just the cost of getting it on the land and having to do things to the site and connect it. So probably around 230 all up. Yeah, which is such a great result. Because when you think about it, 230, that's still barely a deposit for a regular house in this area. Yeah, it means that I will be mortgage free in my lifetime, which is amazing. And I wouldn't get this house, I wouldn't get a custom designed home like this for that amount of money anywhere else. So I'm really happy. Yeah. Well, Rebecca, you have done such a great job in this home. I can see your design eye has been hard at work because you have done a lot of very clever things in here that's made this an exceptionally functional home. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. This is a brilliantly designed tiny house. It's not often that you walk into a space and really get a sense not only of the spaciousness, but just how functional and well thought out every aspect of the home is. And that is exactly what has happened here. There is no question about it that all of Rebecca's thought and hard work has ultimately really paid off in creating a remarkable home for both her and her son.